Israel launches strikes across Lebanon, targeting what it says is the financial structure of Hezbollah. This is the scene live in Beirut after Israeli forces told people to evacuate multiple neighborhoods in the south of the city. In Gaza, the Hamas-run health ministry says that an Israeli strike killed at least 87 people in the northern city of Beit Lahia. And Donald Trump hits the kitchen while Kamala Harris heads to church as the US presidential candidates push for crucial swing state votes. In the US, Kamala Harris is serenaded by Stevie Wonder as she celebrates her 60th birthday on the election campaign trail. Meanwhile, Donald Trump cooks up a storm in the kitchen, serving up French fries to customers at a Pennsylvania McDonald's. Voting has ended in Moldova in a presidential election and a referendum on whether to amend the constitution to make joining the European Union a national aim. Now, the issue of Moldova's future direction has divided the electorate amid tensions exacerbated by Russia's full-scale invasion of neighboring Ukraine. The current pro-EU president, Maya Sandu, says that a, quote, unprecedented assault on democracy is behind what appears to be only a narrow lead over her pro-Russian rivals. She'll likely face a second round vote next month, and her effort to point Moldova towards EU membership appears to have been rejected. Well, there have been multiple allegations that Russia tried to buy votes and mounted a campaign of disinformation. Our headlines for you today. Calls to ban young drivers from carrying passengers of a similar age in order to prevent the high number of deaths on the road. You are not our kids! You are not our kids! King Charles is heckled by a protesting Australian senator during a ceremony at the country's parliament. A 10-year plan to change the NHS. The government launches a consultation over the future of the health service. Good morning. The growing problem of abuse against shop staff. Figures seen by breakfast suggest nearly 40% of workers have considered quitting the industry altogether because of incidents like this. Let's have a look at the Monday morning papers, shall we? And we can start today with The Telegraph, which is focusing on the government's 10-year plan for the NHS in England. We're going to be talking about that this morning. A uh, consultation, it is, on potential changes begins today. And the paper's uh, reporting a warning that patients who miss their appointments might face fines in the future. We'll... Uh, we'll ask uh, a health minister a bit about that, uh, Stephen Kinnock, in about an hour's time. The Times leads on plans from the Deputy Prime Minister, Angela Rayner, for a council housing revolution. They says plans are set to receive one point... Uh, to receive £1 billion in the budget later this month. Could see a doubling of the number of council homes built each year. The Metro this morning focuses on new research that suggests 9 million people have fallen victim to what it calls an epidemic of online scams in the last year. Nine million people. Uh, the survey from the Citizens Advice found that four in ten of those victims had to borrow money or increase their debt in some way to get by as a result. And, of course, as you might expect, many of today's front pages feature pictures of Sir Chris Hoy after he announced that he is living with terminal cancer. This that we're showing here, this is from the front page of the Mirror. They're reporting that he has been overwhelmed by the love and support he has received. Of course, he was working yesterday for the BBC, wasn't he? Um, getting on and doing his job. He talked about it on air yeah. and, you know, looked great, which is what, you know, everyone says he's, is, is, you know, looking really well. But obviously he spoke very candidly, didn't he, over the weekend about that, the diagnosis that he has been living with for about a year now. And the fact that his wife, Sarah, was diagnosed with really aggressive MS at about the same time as Chris got his own diagnosis. I mean, yeah. then what they're dealing with is an entire family unit. It's, yeah. It's tough. And if you read the interview yesterday, um, he is... He, he's always been a hugely positive athlete. And that positivity, I know he is relying on very much now, you know, at the hardest, hardest time. And mm. everything he was saying... He actually said, didn't he, that he feels lucky. Yeah. In lots of ways, he knows he's lucky. Incredible mindset, as ever, from Sir Chris Absolutely, Hoy. that Olympian mindset. Yeah. A baby was poisoned with insulin within hours of the convicted murderer, Lucy Letby, taking over his nursing care, according to new evidence that has been seen by the BBC. Letby's lawyer says the infant's results are explained by a medical condition that the baby was suffering from. The former nurse was found guilty of murdering seven babies and attempting to murder seven others at the Countess of Chester Hospital. 
Ferries, flights and trains have been disrupted as Storm Ashley sweeps across the UK. High winds are expected in Scotland throughout the morning and parts of Northern Ireland and the northwest of England have experienced power cuts. Fans would be guaranteed to know the maximum ticket price at the beginning of the buying process under a proposed law change following the backlash after Oasis tour tickets went on sale. It comes after dynamic pricing left some fans paying more than they expected to secure tickets for the band's reunion gigs. The government and the UK's competition watchdog have pledged to look into the practice. A 12-year-old girl from Sunderland says she is over the moon to discover her message in a bottle was found less than a year after she threw it into the ocean. Grace and her younger brother, Harry, who you can see here, threw their bottles filled with handwritten scrolls off a pier in Sunderland last August. Harry's bottle was found in Denmark and Grace's on an island in Sweden. A bottle was found by a man called Freddie Stahlberg, who then contacted Grace's mum on social media. Both children are now hoping to take a trip to both locations where their bottles were found. There is calls for new laws to force cyclists to stick to the 20 mile per hour speed limit in some of London's best known parks. The charity responsible for the Royal Parks has written to the government to ask for those on bikes to face the same restrictions as drivers. A source for the Department for Culture, Media and Sport said it was aware of the proposals to improve safety and would consider them carefully. A section of a path along the River Thames in West London has collapsed. Pictures taken at Sion Reach near Kew Gardens show a gap several metres wide, leaving people stranded on either side. The area, which is also close to Old Deer Park, has been cordoned off. Richmond Council says engineers are at the site. Shoppers are expected to spend more than £1.5 billion in central London in the run-up to Christmas. That's according to forecasts from the new West End company, which represents businesses in the famous shopping district. Sales are predicted to rise by 3% on last year, helped by an increase in spending from international tourists. Now, if you're out and about, uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled for this guy. Ashley Gordon, also known as DJ AG Online, walks the streets with his decks, streaming his sets online. He gave up his job to do this full time and now has thousands of fans on social media. Prior to live streaming, I was a sales manager at a FTSE 250 company. After COVID, I became a bit disengaged with my job. I decided to do something different. And my kids said, oh, look, give TikTok a try. And I was like, that's for kids, you're crazy. But I took their advice. And really, the rest is history. And Saturday, we're going to be at Brixton. Today at six, a Metropolitan Police officer is cleared of murdering Chris Cabber after shooting him dead in South London two years ago. Chris Cabber died from a single gunshot to the head by Officer Martin Blake during an armed police stop. The Met Police Commissioner defended his action. Sergeant Blake made a split-second decision on what he believed was necessary to protect his colleagues and to protect London. But Chris Cabber's family say they are devastated by the verdict and that they've been failed. And the other main stories on the programme today. An Australian senator heckles the king in the country's parliament and accuses him of genocide against Aboriginal people. A head nurse at the hospital where Lucy Letby murdered seven babies tells the public inquiry into the deaths she got too close to her. I know how he loved uh, Russia. I know. We speak to the widow of the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, who died in prison in the Arctic earlier this year. And new drivers under the age of 21 should have restrictions on who they can take as passengers, so says the AA. Why female football players are demanding FIFA sideline a major sponsor. John Stapleton reveals he's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. I was well aware of the symptoms. I had a tremor, a difficulty swallowing, my handwriting went, and also a feeling of exhaustion, constant exhaustion, which came as a bit of a surprise. But... Plus, the airport saying goodbye too long goodbyes. How long do you need to hug your loved one goodbye? We're going to be talking about a new time limit at an airport in New Zealand.
And coming up, we go to Rathlin Island, famous for its seabird colonies, and meet the dog helping to protect them. At 6.30, around 30 residents are evacuated after a tower block fire in East London. Plus, at the moment, part of the Thames towpath near Kew fell into the river after heavy rain. A Met firearms officer, as we've been hearing, is cleared of the murder of Chris Cabber during a police stop in Streatham two years ago. The head of the Met says he's concerned about the impact of the case on the capital. The more we crush the spirit of good officers, the less they can fight crime. That's, that risks London becoming less safe. Meanwhile, Mr Cabba's family have said they're devastated by the verdict. We look at the huge impact of this case.